What's up guys, welcome back to So Many Parks So Little Time, or as I like to call it, Screaming Pigs Latin. So today we are in SoCal, Southern California, and we are going to be hitting up a couple parks in the San Diego area. Now funnily enough, this is going to be my first trip in a while where I'm traveling entirely on public transportation. And to start things off, we are going to be getting a rather unique coaster credit. So back in college, I took the train all the time. I really became jaded to it, so it wasn't really a big deal at the time, but after being out of college for several years now and haven't taken the train since, it's pretty nostalgic being on the train again. Yeah, the uh, scenery here is a lot better than uh, back when I was uh, going to college in Philadelphia. And we're not even at the parks yet, and we're on a coaster. And we made it to our first park of the day, which is Legoland, California. The original Legoland park in the United States. And this is actually the last Legoland park in the United States that I'm, I need. I've been to the one in Florida, I went to the one in New York last year, and now we get to enjoy the original U.S. park. Just like the other Legoland parks, this is more geared towards kids, but there are plenty of things for uh, families and for adults and for everyone who enjoys Lego to do. There's roller coasters, rides, foods, themed areas, Areas. It's a full-fledged theme park. So yeah, I'm very excited to check this place out. So uh, let's walk through these gates. Let's enjoy Legoland, California. Hey, I recognize him. One thing I can really appreciate about the Legoland parks is they look way, way different from each other. Already, this looks completely different from Florida and, and New York, especially New York.
Coaster Saurus was pretty fun. It's a standard kitty coaster, but it also has the uh, longest wait in the uh, park right now because it has a not good capacity. But I will say I was assigned the last car and uh, the first drop is actually surprisingly fun in the back car. And then surprisingly enough, there are not many Gerslauer Junior coasters out there. there. According to RCDB, there's only four in the world and I've now ridden two. So yeah, fun coaster. Definitely not worth the wait, but for my first time here, it's fine. Okay. This is all your love to do. Just like the one in Legoland New York, Ninjago was a lot of fun, and also like the one in Legoland New York, there is very much a learning curve. Luckily, because this one is so high capacity, it was uh, cycling through so many riders, so you actually got ample screen time, so you actually had more of a chance to learn how to do the whole uh, Ninja Star thing with this one versus the one in New York. So yeah, eventually I was able to get the hang of it. And yeah, these are just very fun rides. So, such a good, uh, unique take on the shooting dark ride. Florida, 
Project X is not the most intense wild mouse, which makes sense considering this is a family park and you can't have a really extreme wild mouse coaster akin to like Apple's Apple at a park like this. That being said, Project X has one job and that one job is to be better than Coast Rider and not. And let me just say, this is better than Coast Rider and not. Fun ride, you do get some mild laterals, uh, not, nothing too crazy given the speed of this ride, but at the same time it's a very long ride, so you get quite a bit of bang for your buck getting on this ride. Very fun, very good fit for Legoland, and I can't reiterate this enough, it's much, much better than Coast Rider at Knott's. If the picture flashes green, you found treasure. Yeah. If it's red, yeah. try again, Explorer. No, here's the clue where you have some treasure now from an earlier time. That is absolutely a sword. That is definitely a sword. Wow. Now, let me check my so, Lego City Deep Sea Adventure was quite a bit of fun. It's very similar to the uh, submarine voyage at Disneyland, but of course uh, more Lego themed than Lego oriented. It's a bit of a smaller scale, but it really works. And it especially works because this came on the heels of that disastrous submarine ride that opened at SeaWorld San Diego a few years ago. This one, it absolutely takes you underwater. You absolutely see real fish. So yeah, whatever uh, the one at SeaWorld did wrong, this one did right. So yeah, Project X had one job to be better than Coast Rider. This had one job to be better than that SeaWorld ride. I don't even know what the name it is. If you remember from the Legoland New York video, I was denied apple fries because it was not quite ready yet. So now I get to uh, finally give it a try. Heard great things about these. It's good. Okay. Okay. You have to. Yeah. 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 Ye
Alright guys, arms up, please, arms up. Alright, everybody, go ahead and put your hands up. Dragon was fun, but of the three US Legoland dragons, I'd put it second behind the New York one. So, fun fact about that dragon, of the three dragons, it's the only one with a custom layout. So yeah, it's pretty cool that it was custom tailor built for Legoland California. Hi right, guys, welcome to Toast Cruise. I'll be your captain today, Captain Gary. Hi Gary. Everybody can hear me all right? Can we get a big thumbs up? Ooh. Awesome, awesome. All right, before I forget, let's have you guys reach down and grab them seatbelts. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Right, we're going to be starting this tour today with Rocky the Water Buffalo on the left. Rocky stands at 6 feet tall, weighing 350 pounds, and is constructed of 310,000 Lego bricks. Fun fact about Rocky, the only reason why he weighs so much is because he's one of two models in the park that is solid Lego. He is the park's favorite tortoises and all their eggs. They've been waiting for those eggs to hatch for the last 22 years. I guess they're waiting for them to come out of their shells. <laughs> Oh, that's not Wow. Elsie stands at seven feet tall and is constructed of 282,000 Lego bricks. Lego anytime soon. <laughs> Our next stop today is London, England with the Elizabeth Tower and the London Eye. Fun fact about the Elizabeth Tower, the bell inside is called the Big Ben. Fun fact about our Elizabeth Tower, the time on it is actually accurate. <laughs> actually, it's one minute ahead, but close enough. Does anybody know why England is considered the wettest country? Because the Queen has reigned there for years. <laughs> Alright, the next up is the Taj Mahal. The real Taj Mahal took over 20 years and 20,000 workers to create. Ours didn't take quite that long, but it's constructed of 340,000 Lego bricks. Here at Coast Cruise, we call it the Taj Mahal. <laughs> Ours is only 17 feet tall, but it's constructed of 117,000 Lego bricks. If you guys look to the very top, you're sure to get an eyeful. <laughs> 240,000 Lego bricks. And if you guys look, they're cleaning George Washington's ear with the Q-tip. His ears have been clogged for quite a while. It's been causing him to have all sorts of rocky conversations. And if you guys look above the presidents, you'll see guest presidents, the Bushes. Oh, 
You'll see the Statue of Liberty. She stands at six feet tall and is constructed of 70,000 Lego bricks. Right behind her is the New York skyline. That takes a shocking amount of 8 million Lego bricks. And all of Miniland combined is a total of 60 million Lego bricks. I don't know if you guys have already visited Miniland today, but if you look from right here, you can see they added dinosaurs into New York, which is pretty awesome. Looks like the pterodactyl is actually flying with the wind. All right, guys, and then here on the left, you'll see a pile of rocks. I would make a joke about them, but you might take it for granted. <laughs> that was one of my bolder jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Oliver's having heart problems up ahead. This is the end of our tour, and now we're being greeted out by our resident octopus band. Our band is constructed of 500,000 Lego bricks. All right, and we have everybody remain seated until we get to a full and complete stop at the docks. Once at the docks, you may pull yourselves out using those blue handrails. Be very careful as you guys exit. Like, please watch your stuff. movie flying theater. I'm rushing because I'm actually running out of time, but the Lego movie flying theater was pretty fun. It's honestly kind of one of the weaker flying theaters that I've done. Weaker motion-wise, that is. But like Project X, it's uh, understandable since uh, the target demographic of the park, younger guests, really doesn't move around that much, but the kids loved it, which is exactly who that ride is meant for, so can't fault it. Cannot fault it at all. And then the Lego movie section just looks absolutely fantastic. It opened up last year and uh, you can tell it's brand new because it looks really, really good. I feel like something is missing here. Can't quite put my finger on it. Once again, the building that I jumped out of. That was Legoland, California, and that was a lot of fun, and I also ran out of time. Yeah, I wanted to do uh, two things. I wanted to do a one quick lap, and I wanted to really get some nice beauty shots of Miniland. Ran out of time. I got a train to catch, so 
that takes priority. But yeah, this was awesome. I think I honestly prefer California and Florida to New York. Though maybe if I think it over a little bit more, it's still fresh in my head. I'm just rushing to get my to my left driver. But yeah, this is a beautifully landscaped, uh, perfectly laid out, very awesome theme park. <laughs> awesome. Everything is awesome. That song's gonna be stuck in my head for the rest of the day. Fantastic stop, but the best part is, this isn't even the end of today. So let's catch a train and let's move on to our next location in three, two. Was that a montage? Anyway, we are now at Belmont Park in San Diego at Mission Beach. Now, this is a stop on my quest to complete every single wood roller coaster in America. And it is home to Giant Dipper. Now, last year, we visited a beachside park in California with a Frederick Church white and red wood roller coaster with Morgan rolling stock trains named Giant Dipper. Now we are at another California beachside amusement park with a white and red Frederick Church wood roller coaster with Morgan Trains, also called Giant Dipper. Oh yeah, and both rides are from the 1920s as well. Point is, these are two, on paper they seem similar coasters, however one of them gets rave reviews <coughs> Santa Cruz, and um, one of them gets not so rave reviews <coughs> Belmont. But even still, this is a very historic coaster. It was so close to being lost to history forever, but then it was saved by the American coaster enthusiasts, and it's thrilling guests for years to come. So let's check out Belmont Park, let's check out the Giant Dipper, let's end this night at a really fun park with a really fun coaster.
So maybe it was my ultra low expectations given the reviews that Giant Dipper has, but I actually really enjoyed it. Okay, it's definitely not as good as uh, Santa Cruz Beach Giant Dipper, but it, I thought it was still very fun. The ride is quite smooth for its age, it runs really well, and then the pullouts on this ride are surprisingly tight. So at the bottom of the drops, it just slams you with positive Gs, and that's not something you really get from a wood coaster, especially one as old as Giant Dipper. Now, will it make my uh, top 20 wood coasters? No, not even close, but it was still a very fun ride and I am very glad that I got here to Belmont Park to ride this piece of history. Dude, this ride here, Control Freak, I think this might be the best ride in the park, actually. This tiny little thing is insane. It's a fitting name, Control Freak, because you control the entire ride. You, as a rider, control which direction it flips in, whether you go forwards, whether you go backwards, whether you stop spinning, whether you start flipping. It is absolutely awesome. It's a shame that these things have such poor capacity because I would love to see more of these rides pop up around the world, but uh, for a small park like this, it's absolutely perfect. <laughs> Doesn't matter that it's not open, Dole Whip automatically makes any park better. and welcome to one quick lap of Belmont Park. Now, this is a very similar park to Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk, so it's not gonna take too, too long, but figured we'd go ahead and get started. So, 
Entering in the free parking lot, to the left here is Giant Dipper. It's a uh, park's claim to fame. It's their one roller coaster, and it's a very nice ride, very classic ride. Got a carousel here. I don't think this carousel has any historical significance, but it's uh, still a nice carousel nonetheless. This is a uh, Control Freak, which is such an insane little ride. I absolutely love it. I wish that uh, more parks had them, even though they're uh, pretty poor capacity, but luckily the park's not that crowded today. Got a very small, I think it's a Mo's Ride uh, drop tower. Then up here, I really like this, uh, the tilt to whirl theme to uh, ice cream. Gotta love it. All right, moving up here. Wow, the park actually cleared out quite a bit. You got arcade over that way, and then you got your usual midway games. Then you got Dippin' Dots. Here's where uh, all the secrets for what's to come are. Got an ice cream shop here. And then a gift shop. Nice view of the Giant Dipper. Burger Place. And more Midway games. And here comes the awesome Giant Dipper. Then down here is a uh, the park's frisbee ride. This is actually a kind of insane location for this ride. Beach Blaster is what it's called. But it, it works really well. It's a very cool fit. And over here is another drop tower, but this one spins, goes uh, up and down a bunch. Over here is the, an escape room. Pretty sweet having it as part of Belmont Park here. Here's a very nice view of Giant Dipper from back here. There's also a go-kart track. It's nothing fancy, just an oval. But still a go-kart track, it's a go-kart track. And over here we're in sort of a backlight area. Um, got a little choo-choo train here. I think I missed a set of bumper cars, but we're gonna go buy it again, so we'll see it there soon. Here is the uh, Chance Unicoaster. I have always seen these indoors. You'll find them at uh, indoor theme parks, but uh, this is my first time seeing one outdoors. That's pretty interesting, to say the least. Fun ride, though. I love a good ride that you can control yourself. Miniature Golf. And then a pretty substantial ropes course here. I still need to try one. I wanted to try the one at Nickelodeon Universe in New Jersey, but uh, it's been closed since the uh, start of, you know what. Uh, here are the bumper cars. Take a quick peek inside. Set of party bumper cars. Got a mint kitty whip here. Some stands. Actually, it's actually interesting that things are closing up. It's only eight o'clock, two hours to cl till closing. And over here, you're going to uh, sort of start getting away from uh, the park and back towards the parking lot, but we're gonna swing around towards the beach and where the clothes are, or where all the food is. I said clothes because I was looking at the, this gift shop here. It's a pretty expansive gift shop, mostly has a uh, San Diego gear.
so it's hard to see because it's nighttime, but the beach is just beyond there. I'm gonna see if I can uh, get closer to the ocean. Not much this way. There's a zip line that's closed, and um, over here is the indoor pool, which from what I've heard is actually a piece of history in and of itself. All right, over here is the ocean, the Pacific Ocean. It has been a very windy day here in San Diego, but uh, cool getting to see the ocean. Yeah, not a lot of people out here because it's uh, blowing sand and salt water and it's windy. But uh, yeah, I always love going to these uh, beachside parks. Uh, quick service food. I see pretzels. There's that pool again. And overall, just a whole lot to offer, and prices here are pretty reasonable. It's somewhere between, uh, I, I, think it, I think it's fairly priced here. Eight dollars for a ride on a Giant Dipper. I mean, if you go to uh, New Jersey, it'd be double that. And then parking is free, admission is free. I would like to come here on a bit more calmer day, but uh, I was able to get everything I wanted to get done, done. And then back this way, we're gonna complete our quick lap. This was a pretty quick lap, about eight minutes. Looks like there's uh, some festivities going on up there. Another gift shop. And here's that arcade again. And we made it back. So there you have it. That's one quick lap of Belmont Park. Well, this wasn't the uh, weather I was expecting when I came to San Diego. Well, at least people are having fun. was Legoland California and Belmont Park in SoCal, the San Diego area. This was such a fun day. This was a very fun day. I really liked going back and forth between the two parks using the city's public transit. It is quite a bit colder 
here in San Diego than I thought it would be, but you know what, it's still a fun day. Legoland California, like I said, it's just a very well-rounded theme park. Great place for families, but even a lot of things for everyone of all ages, adults. If you really like Lego, it's a really great place for you. And then Belmont Park is just a very fun beach theme park. I do think they could use maybe one more roller coaster, even a kiddie coaster or something. That would help uh, really elevate their lineup. But as is, it's a very fun park. Giant Dipper is a very fun roller coaster, even if it doesn't really compare to the one at Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. If you're ever coming to San Diego for SeaWorld, do make a stop at Belmont Park. It's very affordable, lots of fun. It's just down the street from SeaWorld. Legoland is a bit more expensive. Visit that park at your own discretion, but they're both very fun places. And I can't wait to uh, revisit them at some point in the future. But that is going to do it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. San Diego